Hey, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to our post show. Basically, if this is your first time, we just dive deeper into today's message um, and today's service as a whole. Um, we got Pastor Dave here with us. Who hey, just everybody. Gave the message. So thank you for scurrying your way back here as fast as you possibly could. I get, I scurried. Could. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like a scurry, too. It was not graceful. I need a TikTok of that. Yeah. Dave scurrying. Oh the post How show. fast does it take Dave to go from the stage to back here? And we have a timer. Oh, my gosh. To just see how fast you, you can do it. You should get a GoPro in your head. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, would, that would be fun. Preach the, the whole most common thing is, GoPro. when I'm like walking down the side, are people looking at me like, it's like, yeah, I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> I don't want to listen to your questions after. That's why we have Wednesdays. Yeah. Which, plug for Wednesday, we have a Q&A that well, goes live at 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Um, I just Ooh, realized I haven't introduced yeah, myself good and plug. the rest of everybody. My name's Josh. I'm a youth pastor. This is Layla. Layla helps with the pre-show and the post-show and everything online with our live stream services. And then this is Elizabeth. Elizabeth's a worship leader, a youth leader, <laughs> helps with social media. There's got to be something else. I, you uh, help with kids ministry sometimes. You yeah. just do a lot. Uh, I'm all dance over Dance coordinator. Dance like coordinator. That would be the first title. Yeah, oh, I mean, man. all the staff dances, it is Elizabeth is the mastermind. For sure. Them. Because if it was left up to us four, Steve would have to do all of it. Because, oh, can you imagine? Because me, it would be way well, too hard. If Steve did all of it, it would be way too hard. It would just be Steve in the front and then the, the three, me, Dave, and Perry. Oh, but he would Perry, love it. He would love it because he'd be like, oh, like, they're all... Yeah. <laughs> Look weird. Spotlight's on me. He, he would love it. And well, he's a paid professional actor. Oh my he's a god! Professional actor. And yep. we're just like you know rank amateurs. No, you, you know what? You're gracious and fun, and Steve <laughs> is just kind of like a little difficult to work for. Just, I'm just saying. I just want to point out, Dave was the one that hired Steve. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we all do things we regret. Oh my god! And so, oh, wow, we are feeling the love today. <laughs> oh my god! Welcome to Connections. <laughs> and now we have so much power, I can't do anything about it. So there we go. Oh the truth goodness. comes out. But we got the Elizabeth, and we got Austin, and we got Christy. So oh it turns out it was a great deal. Josh can't can we? Oh my gosh! Right now. <laughs> can we erase this and start over? Yes, <laughs> we can't erase this. Steve's gonna have this forever. Yes. Oh, this is this is bad. Tuesday's yeah. gonna be okay. bad if Steve's making yeah. all the TikToks <laughs> oh out today. <my> <laughs> it's gonna be bad for you. <laughs> yes, it is. All righty. So, I really regret it. What? Uh, actually, before we dive into our 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 takeaways and potential questions from today's message um andy gorham came in here right before you guys got here and told me and layla that he he wanted to thank you dave for trying to make a star wars reference um in your message today uh he has no idea oh yes i did in the galaxy (laughs) far far away absolutely i was sitting next to andy in the first service um in one of the front rows and when it comes up i look at him and he's like Dave, don't get me excited like that. <laughs> he was very excited when he saw it. And then you used the movie clip. You just, you got, you were wow. speaking right to Andy Gorham. I was today. trying to speak to Andy. Yep. Well, he wasn't here this last week. Yep. So I wanted to really do something uh, yeah. special for Andy. Yeah. So, yep. You, you, he I was mean, here in spirit last week, though. No, there were two Andys. There were two. Exactly. Yeah. There were two Andys. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. There were two Andys. <laughs> that was for terrible. Sure. By sure. the way, that was terrible. I hated it. I don't like beards. Do not recommend Oh, because you hate the beards. Actually, you elevated it. the concept of Andy significantly. So, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> it was something. All righty. What are some... <laughs> Rescue some this, Josh. Yes. Thoughts, questions, comments, takeaways from today's message. I, um, I know you kind of summarized or had that analogy <clears throat> of like your chapters of the book. So at first it kind of felt like... I was in class, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, like, where are we going with this? I'm like, no, like, it was like this slow lead into like this big ending. And I was like, boom, like, yep. there it is. Yeah. Cause I was like, where are we going with this, right? Like, slavery, bad. Like, and it was just like, I don't know. Yeah. I, it was like, I was just on the seat, like, at the mm-hmm. edge of my seat, like, where is Pastor Dave gonna go with this? Um, so I was, I love today's message, um, awesome. but my favorite part was obviously the ending, kind of how mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. like um, summarized everything yeah. at the end. Because um, at first I was like, is Pastor Dave going to be like, yeah, slavery, good. We do slavery. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I feel like oh, 75% no. of it was, you know, because you were trying to, you know, help teach us what, yeah. what it was like For historically. Sure. Exactly. Um, but I was thinking it would have been a little bit reversed where it's like, you know, slavery is 
you know, mm -hmm. bad. And then this is everything that happened in the past. But yeah. it, you know, so <laughs> I was really confused at first. Um, but then, like I said, the end mm -hmm. yeah. really helped tie things together. So you yeah. caught the flow accurately. Yeah. <laughs> but it was weird. First, let's describe how dark things were. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then how God began to bring light out of that darkness and mm -hmm. freedom out of that slavery. Because that's kind of the movement of history yeah. uh, in what God did. So you you nailed it, Layla. That was, that yeah. was very well. Layla well would have said. been very uncomfortable in those times. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Ugh. This is feeling really bad. Yeah. It's one of my goals when I preach. <laughs> Make people feel bad. Yeah. He's just joking. That's where I was. <laughs> for whoever's watching online for the first time, I promise he's just joking. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably like, man, this guy sounds awful talking about slavery yeah. and making people feel bad. Um, I think one of my favorite things was uh, I have, I love the word studies and how you mm -hmm. you were talking about the I'm probably going to butcher it because I've never heard of the term until today. Okay. The chattel is that how you say it? Yes, mm -hmm. the chattel slavery. Never even heard that term before. Yeah. Um, but then how you took all of the words that they specifically use in the Old Testament and how it's like, well, yeah, this is what. God's the people that weren't God's people, they use more of a form of chattel slavery, but this is what was the words that were used to describe mm -hmm. um what God said to do and what this yeah. what this looks like. And I loved how I mean it also ties into how important accurately interpreting the Bible is. Mm -hmm. For sure. Because yeah. When you look at it surface value, it's oh, God's promoting slavery. Right. I mean and you can even go to the New Testament. Like, there's the book of Philemon, uh, if that's how you say it. Yeah, Philemon. I always butcher that one, too. So Philemon. Sure. Philemon, close enough. <laughs> Phil, close I enough. used to say, like, Phil Lemon, Philomian. Phil, Phil Lemon. Lemon. Just, I, just yes. pronounce, I used to pronounce it how it looked. Oh, no. So. But, I mean, that's a that's a whole letter that Paul is writing uh, about a slave yep. to, to this man. So, like, you, if you just looked at it service level, you'd think, mm. oh, man, it looks like God is okay with yeah. this. But in all reality... God's not okay with how we view chattel mm -hmm. slavery, but how he views a servant's heart. And all exactly. That. No. In fact, I really recommend that, that people read the book of Philemon. It's one chapter, super short, right? Mm -hmm. But in that, you will see the heart transformation that comes to a Christian mm -hmm. where you don't look at anyone as anything other than fellow man, brother in Christ. Yeah. Sure. And it's so clear in that book in the, and Paul couches things in this beautiful language where he's almost like going Philemon, I don't want to tell you what you should do, but you know what you should do. And he lays it out. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Elizabeth, did you have any, anything um, that stood out to you? Mine was just, I've never, I don't think I've ever heard a sermon on this. I so think I, honestly, I like, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just like an uncomfortable thing for people to talk about or like, oh, like you just got to interpret it right. Like that's yeah. all I was like ever really yeah. told. So like I was listening to it and I was just like, oh, like, yeah. yeah. And I, f I felt like that this whole series mm -hmm. where I'm just like, there's mm -hmm. so many things that I feel like people are kind of like scared to talk about because yeah. they're like, oh, well, like people are just going to like, they're not going to listen or like, oh, like people just get offended, whatever. But it's just been so cool to, like, really hear, like, how the Bible should or, like, what it actually says about yeah. these things. Yeah. I think part of that is because we don't typically use the word slavery yeah. mm, today. So, sure. um, you know where I'm going with this? Like, the things that we do, we use other words, and I mm -hmm. think we're really yes. accustomed to justifying it, which yeah. you kind of touched on, too. Um, so like that word in particular, at least I don't hear often, mm -hmm. either like on social media or in my day-to-day -day conversations. I mean, yeah. I do tell my kids that I had them to be my slaves, which is another topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my kids are like, we're not, we're not your bad slaves. people, and I'm like, I yes, promise. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Dave. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that's part of it, right? Yeah. Like, which again, I, um, kudos to you for, for having this conversation, yeah. you know, openly, you know, obviously with our church and for those who tune in online, because it is really a prominent, real thing going mm -hmm. on today, yeah. whether or not we call it slavery or not. Yep, it is. It absolutely yeah. is. Uh, it was fascinating to me. I read an article that was published by a group that works on modern Bible translations, and they talked about how they wrestled 
with the Old Testament and New Testament terms mm -hmm. because if they wanted to translate it literally, it would all say slave. Mm -hmm. But they knew when they used the word slave, what would happen in everybody's mind is different than what God meant when he mm -hmm. said those words. Mm -hmm. And so they usually chose the word servant to try to give a little bit of a different connotation. Yeah. And when we talk about serving others, we go, yeah, that's cool. We should all serve others. Well, serving is really the verb form of slave. Yeah. Um, but it means something so different in the community mm -hmm. of faith. It's like he took a word and gave it a brand new definition, a brand new concept and said, this is how you're to live. And it's nothing like what takes place in the world. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I want to I wanna give people a little teaser of our Q&A, Dave, <clears throat> because there's some people that they hear us talk about it, but they don't actually tune in to hear some of the stuff that we dive into. So I want to give them a little teaser. This is what you could experience if you tune, tune into our Q&A. One of the things that the Bible talks about, and I mentioned it to you after first okay, service, yeah. uh -huh. was it talks about the year of Jubilee. Yeah. And in this year of Jubilee, there's a whole bunch of festivals, but there, there are certain things that they're not allowed to do. But they it's a year-long party, basically. Yep, year-long party. Yeah. And basically, they have to, <laughs> if they have property that they bought from their fellow brothers, they have to give that property back. Or if they have slaves, servants of their fellow brothers who, who they bought that were poor, they have to release them and their sons and their daughters and their entire family. How does this show that... God, again, is saying, hey, I don't condone chattel slavery. Yeah. Um, and one of the ways it would say that is by God going, there is going to be a time uh, that routinely comes where every servant slave set free. Every debt canceled. Um, all property returned. Mm -hmm. And what's fascinating is, all of that is like a type or metaphor of what Jesus does for us spiritually. Mm -hmm. He wants all of us to live in freedom. Yeah. And so our debt of sin is canceled. Our right uh, to be a part of the kingdom of God is fully, you know, given to us. Um, and, and we're totally set free to live the way God intended human beings to live. So that is, year of Jubilee, and that took place every 49 years. Mm -hmm. But every seven years, there was also a time where prisoners set free, uh, debts canceled. So this was routine. I, I, I love God's rationale for doing this. He says this a bunch of times. I don't remember how many, when he's given legislation. He goes, don't forget, you were slaves. They were in bondage in Egypt. Yep. You know what it's like to be a slave. You don't treat anybody the way you're treated that's mm. not the way it works in my kingdom yeah absolutely thank you for doing that that was a question that i had just to see more of the tie-in because i'll pick your brain so there you go if you turn it tune into our q a these are some of the things that we talk about so that's a little teaser yeah. the q a is great and yeah. you guys got to join it's fun a it's fun yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i know i just get to sit here and just listen and yeah. go How it's challenging so but it's fun that's why i love that's being exactly. here oh i'm done i'm like yeah. all right i just gotta it'll take like 10 minutes and process everything right. that i just heard dave say yeah so it's no funny. i really enjoy it again wednesday yeah. nights at 7 p.m um let's go ahead and dive into some of our discussion questions for cool. today's message what are some ways that we can help protect people from slavery mm. can be within our community, within our country, around the globe, what are some ways that we can help protect people from, from, it doesn't even have to be more of the, sometimes our brain can go slavery of what was experienced in America and, and just, mm -hmm. hey, go and you have to go and do this. But there's also new forms that are like sexual slavery and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So what are some ways that we can just protect people from that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was thinking just now about Fight Ministries, yeah. which is an organization mm -hmm. that we are 100% behind. So I think, you know, financially mm -hmm. is one um, way where you can give to organizations that help, you know, support mm -hmm. things like this. Um, and then, you know, another thing that came to mind is being brave in moments where you meet you might witness it yeah. and obviously being smart with that, right? Like right. never putting yourself in something that is potentially unsafe, right? Um, but I, again, taking this back a step, you know, slavery and this term and how we don't really use it. Like when I think more into this about 
how you can see this on a day-to-day -day basis and I don't even realize it because it's just kind of like in one ear out the other. Yeah. That's where I'm kind of trying to digest on this mm -hmm. question. Like, do I see yeah. moments like this and I, and I don't stick up for people or even for myself yeah. for that matter, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think just like, for, for me, it's like really thinking about this at a more granular level, like a deeper level of, you know, obviously the extreme that yeah. we know is still mm -hmm. going on today, but even maybe more of the less extreme or the, wow. um, the, the less common, right. That again, we're just so accustomed mm -hmm. to that. Right. We're just, right. we're not even really, um, intentionally pointing out. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that's for me, like, that's something I want to walk away with is just being more mindful about the different forms of slavery yeah. or, you know, um, and obviously balancing that too with like, you know, slavery kind of being coined up too with serving, but mm -hmm. when it's the wrong way, just mm -hmm. being brave in those moments and, and, um, doing whatever I can do to try to help yeah. protect others and, and myself. But yeah. that's, that's the first few things. Oh, that's, wow. mind. Yeah. that's really good. Yeah. That's really good. I wasn't even like thinking in it that way in that moment. So it's just like, wow. Yeah. My, br my brain too is like, I, yeah. I can't like, it's hard to do the post show right after the service because yep. I'm still digesting too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes probably, people are like, this girl talks a mile a minute because my brain is like, ah, because there's so many <laughs> yeah. good things that come from Pastor Dave. I and process this out loud too, so I get it totally. <laughs> and I, I love where you took us there. Yeah. That is so, is so practical. We've all been in like bathrooms and airports or whatever, and we see the posters or the signs that say, if you need help, and it'll be in multiple language usually, because those are the places where trafficking takes mm -hmm. place. Trafficking mm -hmm. pl takes place in Kalamazoo County. Yep. And yeah. when we become aware, just that like, that situation looks funny. Yeah. Um, if someone is being used, misused, mistreated, controlled, and we recognize it, Finding a way to say something or tell someone becomes really, really important. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You definitely hit the nail on the head on that question right there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> One of the things I do want to do real fast, because you did mention it from stage. Um, can you just give a little bit more of a breakdown of what, exactly what Fight Ministries does, yeah. where they're located, and how we support them with our finances? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're um, in the Dominican Republic. And what they do is they um, have connections um, in towns where sex trafficking is practiced. And they will literally, and these are trained people, part of the organization, they will go into different establishments where sex tra trafficking is happening. They will strike up conversation with girls they will let them know that if they went out, there's a safe way to do it. Mm -hmm. They provide um, transportation out. They have a home that is set up where the, where the girls and their children often can go to. And they receive spiritual discipleship, vocational training, yeah. counseling, all sorts of emotional therapy so that they can completely withdraw from that life. And so they can reestablish a different kind of life with an occupation, a way to make money, uh, uh, education for themselves, their kids. So it is a beautiful organization that holistically ministers to women and their children that are caught up in the sex trafficking industry. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to give to that, you can go online to our app, to the website, or if you give it here at the church, you can just drop the offering in there and write missions fund on there. And a portion of that money right. goes to fight ministries, but also all of it. So anything that's given to the missions fund goes to one of our mission, absolutely. missions. Absolutely. Every, every dime. Right? Yeah. So yep. every single penny that you give goes to a missions partner. And one of those being fight ministries. And again, we have a few spots open at that table for a banquet this upcoming Friday. If you want to be a part of that, you can just email us at connections at my three C.org. And if we have a spot open, it'll be all yours but it is first come, first serve. So the next question I want to dive into is we're talking about interpretations. Obviously, throughout this whole series, there are many different people that can have different interpretations of the Bible, including religious groups that can have different mm -hmm. interpretations of the Bible. So how should we approach discussions of slavery in the Bible, keeping in mind that people in other religious groups might view it differently? Mm. 
That's a tough question. It is a tough, is a tough question. question. Uh, for me, I would shy away from these conversations because I don't feel that I'm educated enough. Mm. I would be like, um, I need to go watch some more of Dave's sermons or talk to Dave some more, right? Because I, I feel like this is a very delicate conversation. Yeah. Um, so that that's my first instinct is being educated mm -hmm. and have a, a really good grounded understanding. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would obviously encourage people to be opening to, you know, listening to other people's opinion, right. To have mm -hmm. that, um, you know, that perspective of I'm open to your feedback and, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm listening. Um, but I, like today I, I learned a lot about even the difference between the old Testament and the new Testament of the, the terms and the viewpoints. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. again, like I agree with Elizabeth, yeah. this isn't something that I know a lot from a biblical perspective. When I think of slavery, I think of things that I learned from hit, like history classes, yeah. right? Yeah. Social studies, For things sure. like that in school. Absolutely. So this is so, it's so neat, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I just in our 30 minute time frame of listening to your uh, message today, Dave, I think there's so much more grit um, yeah. and level of understanding to this that, that I realize sitting here in these yeah. moments I don't have. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So I would want that before ever trying to have like a proper conversation where I yeah. would share my opinions, um, but would always be mm -hmm. open to, to listening to, to people's thoughts and probably would be like, if they wanted answers from me, like I would probably be like, Hey, have you met pastor Dave? <laughs> I got a message that yeah. you can listen to. Let me, send Let me call you a friend. Yeah. Let me send you the link. Yeah. I feel the same way. And I have to skedaddle in just a second. Um, but I think honestly, just any opportunity you can take to really learn and dive deeper into like the Bible and mm. what it really says is something that I need to work on for myself, yeah. but then also so that I can yeah. have these conversations because I'm in the same way where like, I feel like I can't because I like, I don't know, like, well, like, mm -hmm. you know, um, and which is why I've loved this series so much. Cause it has opened, like, it's just kind of changed how I've thought yeah. about mm. like, Oh, like, yeah, Elizabeth, you need to like dive deeper into this stuff yeah. and learn mm -hmm. more. But sure. I don't know. I think coming at it just from a a place of love with all of these all of these conversations, not just this one, but yeah, I don't absolutely. Know. I feel like there's uh, so, sometimes I think we can over complicate things. Yeah. I'm and I'm bye, Elizabeth. Bye, Elizabeth. Bye, Elizabeth. Gonna go wear another hat now. Thank you. Go sing your heart out <laughs> to the Lord. <laughs> um. Because it's kind of like, just start with who you know God to be. Yeah. Say, you know what? I may not know a whole lot of the ins and outs and interpretations and words when it comes to slavery. But here's what, I, here's what I've discovered to be true about God. God is about freedom. Mm. Yeah. And God is about human dignity and people living the life he designed. And slavery, as practiced in our world, as practiced in the American's past, is incompatible with what I've come to understand God is. So I may not be able to answer a bunch of your questions, but it's not conceivable to me that the God revealed in Scripture could condone that kind of practice. Mm. Yeah. It's all you have to say because Absolutely. it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Absolutely. So I shouldn't say that I condone slavery with my three kids at home. <laughs> <laughs> so what? The, no, growing up, Josh us like, kids no, always no, used to go to our mom that. and dad, we're just your slaves. <laughs> and they would say something like, you're right. <laughs> so what I'm hearing you say is that whenever I have kids and the TV remote's on the coffee table and I don't want to get up, it's wrong for me to get them to get it. Just don't say that they're slaves. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> hey, beloved child of mine, out of love, would you, you give me that remote? You do such a good job eating the re remote. Much better than I would. <laughs> Whoa. I'm pretty sure you, my you mom, should write this down. I'm pretty sure that was my mom good. used to just tell me, I'd be like, oh, mom, like, oh, you're just getting me to do this because I'm your kid. And she's like, like, well, I pay for the food. I pay yeah. for it. I'm like, yeah, you're right, actually. This yeah. is not the case. So, but yeah. I just want to say I appreciate that answer because immediately I'm like, oh my gosh, right? Like, yeah. 
I don't know enough. I would be scared. But again, it's like every time you talk, I'm like, well, when when you put it that way, I don't have to know mm -hmm. ins and outs of New Testament, Old Testament, right? Yeah, like sure. I understand my God today and yeah. I can still radiate that light and love. Right? That's it. I can't answer some questions, but I know some things are not compatible with who I know God to be. Yeah. So I can't answer your question, but it can't be that. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, uh, our last question, one of the things that we're seeing so much, especially with the topics of slavery and the topic of abortion, mm -hmm. is right now Satan is trying his absolute hardest every single day to get us as people to view life as meaningless, as, oh, this just happened through evolution, God's not in it. It doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter what sin that we commit because at the end of the day, we're just going to die and that's going to be it. He's trying to make us believe that hell is not real, that life has no value other than we're just here because we're, we're just here. What are some ways that we can show that life does matter, that life does have value through our actions and through our words and through caring for people? What are some ways that we can do that? Man, it's hard to just hear that that's where we're at yeah. right now. I mean, I don't disagree. It is. And if I'm being honest, I have moments where I struggle, like being extremely vulnerable right now. I've, I had a really rough week last week and just yesterday, just um, moments where I'm like, man, like the devil is like attacking me with my mm. thoughts. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I hate when I get emotional on the show. It's so hard, but it's like it hurts that we feel that life doesn't matter and that we question why we're here and what's the meaning of life because we are God designed and we're so amazing and what we do for each other is unexplainable. And I think for me in um, these moments, it's like, it fills my cup up so, <laughs> so much to come to church and like do these things and have these like deep conversations because it's a good reminder of, um, we all matter. Yeah, you yes. who are watching right now, you matter. Right. And you are, when you accept Christ into your heart, everything is washed away. All of your sin, right. all of your faults. And when you do those things and you go out and you radiate his love and his light, you are changing other people's lives and you are making it better. And that's so powerful in itself. And no matter what adversity that you come up against every day, which everybody does, like you can keep right. falling down and getting back up. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing. And there is a wonderful ending at the, yeah. at the end of all of this. And it's so, it's so amazing. Like it's just so disappointing that people don't feel this fire uh, of pureness and, and love. And when you can help shed that to others, like, it's just, it's beautiful. It's, it's hard for me to even explain. And I'm not one that is perfect at this by any means. But I think that um, when we lean into this, we do this in more ways than yeah. we even realize. We touch people's lives and show different perspectives more than, you know, more yeah. than we realize. Yeah. That was really well said, I Layla. Think that Layla should preach next week. <laughs> no, that no. was so that good. Was, yeah, yes, that was great. And so on point. Yes. Layla, you contrasted that there's reality and the reality is we matter yeah and then there's feelings which sometimes contradict reality but are so powerful we're tempted to believe it yep and that 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 faith in the reality versus faith in our feelings is a really important dynamic to understand yeah. um i think that we need reminded routinely of what the truth about ourselves really is. So many people in our world have been taught that they are nothing more than um, an animal, mm. that you are the product of time and chance. And if all that's true, then there's no such thing as mattering. Yeah. There's no such thing as it. But the truth is we're yeah. created, in the, created by God yep. in his image for a purpose that matters forever and keep leaning into that reality is critical. I, I listened to a, um, I listened to a podcast on sleep while I was on the treadmill this last week from a woman who heads a sleep research Institute at one of the major universities in California. And she was talking about 
sleep and schizophrenia and how they people can't their brains can't determine that that um between reality and fantasy and she was talking about this kind of stuff and one of the observations made was that people who are schizophrenic and then go on medication to help correct it find themselves falling into depression because when they were schizophrenic and they thought everybody was out to get them at least they mattered Mm. and the government's out to get me I must matter and it's actually reported that people said I'd rather be schizophrenic and feel like I matter than be depressed as though my life doesn't. Think about that. Wow. Yeah. Because as human beings, we just need to know we matter. And then this, this sleep expert said, perhaps one of the best things we can do to anybody and everybody is remind them consistently, you matter. Mm-hmm. And I thought, amen, yeah. Yeah. is so exactly possible. right. You matter, no matter how you feel, you matter. Yeah, no, that's really good. That's really good. Thank you guys for... For sharing, I mean, because yeah. at the end of the day, that's one of the most important things that we can do is remind people yeah. of how they're made in God's image and how God loves them and how their life matters because God was the one who created and ordained it. So, absolutely. Um, if you have any questions, you can submit them at my3c.org or submit a question tab right at the top. I'm going to talk about that real fast because Dave and myself and Steve have been talking. We're like, okay, we're getting tons of questions, which is amazing. Yep. That is exactly what we wanted to happen. And before we even started this, we were like, oh, yeah, this is probably going to be something we do during the series. And then we're probably not going to do it anymore because there might not be any traction. Well, uh, you guys have proved us wrong. <laughs> You guys have shown that you love this by the overwhelming amount of questions that have been submitted. So through Amani, and Dave, and Steve's talking, we have decided that this is what we're going to be doing with the Q&A. For the rest of this deconstruction series, we're going to be tackling the, the topics from the messages. So any questions that are submitted on any past messages or the message from this Sunday, those are the ones that we're going to be addressing um, in this week's and next week's Q&A. But then after that, we're going to go week by week and we're going to pick a topic. topic. Yep. And if there's any questions that are asked, we'll pull those out of the bank and we'll sub- we'll talk about that topic and answer those questions then. So we're going to be doing that. It's still every single week, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. If you have any questions at all, you can submit those. But just know that we might not answer them that upcoming week because we're going to save them for a future week where we're talking about that topic or if it aligns with that. Do you have anything you want to say, say about that, nope. Dave? said perfectly, John. Yes! score <laughs> I, I wondered about that yep. what would happen with questions that maybe weren't necessarily re- yeah. uh, relevant so, to the deconstruction yeah. topics so, so I that, think that's neat yep, that is what we decided to do and don't I don't want you guys to think that we don't care about your questions or we're choosing not to address them what we want to do is we want to be able to answer all the questions with deconstruction but then take those questions you might have and go we want to be able to ded- dedicate an entire Q&A to this topic or to this one question depending on what it is so mm-hmm. that is what we're going to be doing with the Q&A once we finish the deconstruction series. So in in the three Q&As from now, you'll hear about our first topic. Maybe we'll even give a teaser that Sunday. Just say, hey, this is what we're talking about this upcoming Wednesday. That'll be a little fun. Um, So yeah, if you have any questions, you can submit those at my3c.org. Go to the top, uh, submit a question tab. Totally anonymous. Uh, We love your questions here at Connections, and we love getting the chance to be able to answer those. And we live stream on Facebook and YouTube at 7 p.m. And then it also goes live on Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts, so you can listen to it throughout the week. So it's a great, great resource. I highly encourage you to go look at it. But we hope you guys all will either join us for that Q&A or join us next Sunday. We have three services in person, 820, 940, and 11 o'clock. And we also live stream our 920 service. We have a pre-show beforehand and obviously the post-show right after. So we highly encourage you guys to join us for one of those. But until then, see you guys. Have a great week.